a lot of people who are not in the tech ecosystem may not really understand the details and the guts of what it means to have cloud computing. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm always joking that that cloud up there <laughs> is held by real yeah. servers on the ground. Could you just take us through yeah. what it means uh you know for the digital economy across Africa which is what the Africa Data Center is serving yeah. and what it means to run a tier 3 data center one thing i must tell you it took me and my colleagues like 15 20 minutes to get in here at one point i thought i was getting into fort knox or something what's about what's up with that <laughs> tell us about why security yeah. is important and all that stuff that comes with it. Over to you, Dan. Thanks a lot. Uh, really, like you've just mentioned, you know, when everyone talks about cloud computing and every, when everyone talks about how how much they cannot lay their hands on cloud, yeah, uh, you're right that really a data center is the physical manifestation of the cloud. Uh, ultimately, what we are talking about on cloud computing is to anonymously have your data stored and processed in a location that, uh, uh, for a very good good reason, no, is not known publicly, but is known to you as an organization. So you've trusted a particular cloud services provider to host and offer you that critical service. But it still ends up being run and processed and stored, stored in a hardware device. And that hardware device is what we've been entrusted to keep in our facilities. So yes, we host cloud service providers in uh, East Africa and beyond, because as the name suggests, we are not just operating in Eastern Africa. Correct. Africa Data Centers is present in uh, South Africa. So we've got data center facilities in Johannesburg and Cape Town. We are present in West Africa. So we've got a data center in Lagos. We are present in East Africa. And rightfully today, we are hosting you. And uh, we will definitely show you the nuts and bolts around the data center. So how many data centers across Africa? So in terms of the data centers that we have across Africa, um, we are talking of about six data center facilities that are live and fully owned and operated by Africa data centers. Wow. Uh, but That's a serious all, operation. It is. But of all the things, if there's anything we've had to do is to standardize how we are designing, building, and operating these data centers so that when a customer knocks on Africa data center's door, there is an expectation of very high availability you are going to get that same availability of 100% uh, across all our data center facilities. But of course, we've got those industry benchmarks that we have to work along with. So we work with Uptime Institute to make sure that we can translate availability to something that is quantifiable. Maybe explain to my viewers what yeah. it means to have 99.999% sure. uptime. I agree. So, so, so I was actually going to talk about that. So okay. when you come to Africa data centers, we, we have and run tier three data center environments. And tier three loosely translates to us, you know, making sure that we can offer you 100% availability. But shouldn't we offer 100% availability? Then what's the bare minimum? So that bare minimum is 99.982%, which translates to eight minutes in a calendar month. And that includes any issues. Eight minutes downtime. Eight minutes downtime. And that means any issue that can occur, regardless of whether it's what it was within our operations team's uh, you know, responsibility and capability to stop or not. So everything, including what is really outside of our control, is still limited at that eight minutes threshold. And that is why really data centers are seen to be mission critical, which ties into what you are talking about, and apologies for that, the security requirements yes. in the data center environment, because you know, you talk about what we are hosting today. We are hosting cloud service providers who are hosting very critical services uh, by third parties. We are hosting banks and financial institutions in Kenya. So over 50% of banks have So critical us. infrastructure. Critical basically. infrastructure. And you can appreciate that this is infrastructure that's not owned by us. This is infrastructure that is owned by our customers, but they've trusted us because we are giving them much better security. They've trusted us because they are getting better access levels because they need connectivity. So over 50 network providers that they can make use of. They've trusted us because it's much easier for them to connect and enjoy one another's services, which is which relates to what you're talking about, that digital economy. So that level of trust and that level of operational requirement and security matrix, that is what at times could maybe, uh, you know, come through as an inconvenience to a customer when they're working in. But I have to say this and maybe just clarify that 
it only takes long if at all you're coming in for the very first time. And in which case, we hadn't done the pre-registration to make it a lot quicker for you to access the facility. But really, for our customers, once we have them onboarded and we have a trusted list of those that have been trusted to come and you know access the facility to offer any kind of maintenance it's a lot quicker and we then then focus on being efficient and customer centric and of all the things making sure that we can support them in terms of any activity that they are coming to conduct in the data center facility as quick as as quick as, quick as possible so we've heard that you are a tier 3 yeah. data center how many other tiers are there for the benefit of my of my audience, audience yeah. how many tiers and what exactly does it mean to be a tier three True. data center? Okay. So we've got four tiers of data centers. Okay. And this is something that uh, has been put in place in the industry by Uptime Institute. So Uptime Institute is an organization in the United States and really they have purposely and uh, targeted uh, themselves to offer us support by way of being an industry body that collects, you know, the design best practices or the design principles that data center operators can make use of so that if we are talking about achieving tier three standards, which is that 99.982%, then what have we done to make sure that we've got redundancies in place? So Uptime Institute has defined those in four categories. The first category is actually tier one, and tier one really just means no redundancies. So in addition, zero, zero redundancies. Redundancy. And then the next question is, if you've got zero redundancy, then would you, would you, write, would you entrust your mission critical services in a zero redundancy environment? you'll be uncomfortable. Then you get to the next, which is really a tier two environment. So when you're talking about zero redundancy, what yes. do you basically mean in terms of uptime? What what are the industry expectations in terms of uptime uh, per month? When you're talking about uh, tier one, it's almost like uh, you are actually not even having a threshold as to really what is meant to what you are meant to achieve in terms of availability. So standard. basically, it's pata pata. Yes, it, it, it's uh, <laughs> you know, and, and that is how it comes really when you are talking mission criticality mm. or service or mission critical mm. services. Then it starts from a certain level. Okay. Now tier two, uh, then talks of you know uh, you can be talking of redundancies in place, but this redundancy is actually share common parts. In which case, explain that. So a re- redundancy sharing common parts. Um, <clears throat> Let me say you've got two UPSs, but these two UPSs are actually sitting in same environment mm. where if at all a flood occurred, then you it's have to done. shut all of them. Yes. So you see, you're then limited in terms of how much availability okay. you can guarantee okay. simply because you do not have redundancies on path. So it can it can it can be in terms of the UPS, which is maybe your power. Okay. Okay. It can be in terms of your connectivity. Yes. I, I will say, you know, talk of network infrastructure in Kenya. Mm-hmm. There's always the much talked about redundancies. But then all of a sudden you get a single cut, actually a single physical cut causing multiple failures. <laughs> when a single multi- when a single cut causes multiple failures, then it means there were multiple fibers along the same path. And this really hinders your availability and resilience requirements from a highly expected environment of availability or reliability. Uh, Done. Yeah. You know, my audience is not all technical. (laughs) eh? Yes. The term redundant (laughs) means very different things to different people. people. Yes. But from a tech infrastructure perspective. Yes. What exactly does that mean? Yes. So, So redundancy always answers the question, what if one path goes down. Okay. So the question around what if one path goes down, yes. that brings in the, el- the element or the aspect of you need to have an alternate path. Mm. So let's say a UPS went down, mm. then you should be having a second UPS. So that's the redundancy. That's redundancy. One Brilliant. network path goes down, Brilliant. then a- another path should I like to break it down <laughs> from the lowest common denominator so Agreed, that we yeah. are all on the same on path. On the same line. Okay, so yeah. we are now into... Tier two. two. Tier three. So tier three, that is where we play, and that is where you then have you have redundancy, which is which in which case you've addressed the what if one path goes down. Correct. But the other thing you've actually done is to make sure that these redundancies are in physically separate environments. Because you have to then address the other requirement of which is you should not have a common failure, then necessitating you shutting down because they are sharing common rooms. 
So in a tier three environment, that is when you now talk of a concurrently maintainable mm. environment. And concurrently maintainable, again, to break it down, it then just means that supercomputer that a banking institution has trusted us to host, Yes. at no point should we be telling them, guess what? We have a maintenance activity. Mm. So with us having to maintain a UPS, then we're asking you to come and shut down in the night on Sunday. Like a certain organization in this country <laughs> sends you a maintenance alert. Yes. And you have no service for the full day. For the, for, for the full day. Talking about that. Yeah. How do you maintain 24-7 power with the, kind of, with the current situation that we are having with humongous power interruptions? It's all again aligned to that whole data center architecture. So that tier three requirement that I was talking about, remember I told you that you've got the redundancies mm. in place. So the, you, so the redundancies start right from the power level. So we have redundancies for this data center in the form of having two feeds from the utility service provider. So we had to actually had an, have a conversation with the utility provider wow. and let them know the mission, the critical, the critical nature of our business. And they've then made sure that we've got two independent power supply paths and feeds into this facility. So that then just addresses the question, you know, or, or at least reduces the uncertainty or the chance of us having a total outage because you are only having one utility line or you actually having two but they are coming from the same part have you had a situation where those two feeds are down we've had a national outage <laughs> in yes. kenya so the national outages in kenya have been the only unique situations mm. where we are then having both of the lines actually down mm. but as you can appreciate national outages don't just don't occur every other time so no, they occur they very few times mm. and i can tell you that in terms of how we our experience in terms of our power architecture in kenya we are doing good because you travel down to uh, Nigeria where we also have an operation, the infrastructural layout and maybe the operational uh, uh, you know, levels, we have a lot of outages down there. But I want to challenge you. <laughs> yes. Dan, uh, yeah. I'm sure you've heard me uh, use this analogy before. Yeah. Uh, for crying out loud, let's not, <laughs> let's not uh, sort of uh, uh, compare ourselves with other African countries. True. Uh, because we must aim higher. We must aim Indeed. higher, yeah. uh, you know, because if we do that, then uh, our threshold yes. comes <laughs> a little bit long. So, yeah, during that power outage, what yeah. other redundancies do you guys have? Anytime we have a power outage, then we've got we've got our generators that you, then support. They us. kick in immediately. They kick in immediately. That's what I wanted. And to that know. gives you like a whole five seconds that we should be having, you know, the generators in, and so we have. Uh, power resumption in Brilliant. all our facilities Brilliant. and yeah you're right you know uh, when you are talking about us comparing ourselves to other environments mm. uh, you'll be shocked but uh, the mantra for africa data centers is uh, to always solve global heights. competence yes yeah, so global uh, global <laughs> competence is because yeah if we don't think like that yeah we have big tech operating in africa mm -hmm. we have aws yes. setting up data centers uh, you know we must be up to scratch so Hats off to uh, to Africa Data Center for that sort of thinking.